Hey, what's up guys? Just got the new iPad Pro 12.9 inch with the new M2 chip. So let's go ahead and unbox this thing and review it. Now, for comparison purposes, I do have my iPad Air with the M1 chip. So here it is, really nicely packaged, just like they normally do. It does say iPad Pro. It's the same cameras that they had last year on the M1 chip. Still have a bezel. It's actually exactly the same screen, which is the Liquid Retina XDR display with the uh, mini LED backlighting. Let's see what else it comes with. Probably some Apple stickers and stuff and how to set it up, which these things are pretty self-explanatory. Sure. You do get the USB-C charger, which is nice, which you don't get with the iPhone, and you get this nice braided USB-C to USB-C cable, and that's pretty much it. I got a chance to play with the new iPad Pro, and it's definitely better than the iPad Air with the M1 chip, but how much better is it, and is it worth the extra price? Let's find out, starting with the Geekbench test. So, single core performance, it's definitely better. Not by a huge amount, 1882 versus 1705, but multi-core is really where it shines, so 8457 versus 7273. And as a frame of reference, I do have my third generation iPad Pro with the A12X Bionic chip, and you can see there's a huge jump from there, from the third generation, pretty much almost doubling the speeds to the sixth generation. Now when we get to the displays, the Pro has the Liquid Retina XDR display versus the Liquid Retina display on the iPad Air. However, they look pretty similar to each other. They both look good. Yeah, you could say that the Pro looks a little bit better, but honestly, unless they're next to each other, it's very hard to tell the difference. They both look amazing. But where it does shine is the Pro has a hundred up to 120 hertz refresh rate whereas the Air is a 60 hertz refresh rate. So translation, when I scroll with this, it's fairly smooth, it's not terrible. However, when I scroll with this, it's buttery smooth. And it's, it's, it's very obvious that, especially when I open up these as well, if we pay attention to the iPad Air, it's not quite as smooth as the Pro. So that's really the main thing that the Pro just feels a lot smoother and it's funny because even though my older version Pro has a much slower processor when you're scrolling with this because this also has the 120Hz display, even this feels faster than the Pro, uh, than the Air. So it's, it's, it just goes to show you that it's not just processing power, but it's actually just the refresh rate that just makes this thing buttery smooth versus the iPad Air where it's more choppy. Next we'll talk about the Apple Pencil. So the second generation Apple Pencil is compatible with both of these. So you could see it works just fine. If I wanted to type good notes, I could go here and just, you know, start writing something. And it registers it just fine. It's very good at it. If I was an artist, which I'm not, I could go to Procreate and I could start, you know, picking different types of brushes to make different things. And it also takes into account sensitivity. So if I'm lightly pressing this, it will draw something lightly. If I push it a bit harder, it will draw it a bit. Uh, if so, it really emulates or simulates an actual pen or pencil. Now, when I get it to the Pro itself, it has this new feature, which is called Apple, which is really the hover feature. And the hover feature, I do have to connect it like this so it can actually transfer over, but I wanted to demo that it actually switches very quickly from one to the other. Now, if I try to do something on this, it won't register because it's, it's now tied to this iPad. So same thing happens here, except now we have this new hover feature. So if I go over these things, they kind of get selected and it recognizes it fairly quickly. Very important, when you get the iPad right out of the box, mine was iPad OS 16.0. 16.0 does not include the hover feature. You actually have to update it to 16.1 to get the hover feature to work. And I do have a screen protector on this now and it works just fine 
with the screen protector. And if I swipe from this side, I can actually start writing in notes. And I can also hover it. If it's, it's, it's probably a little hard to see with the camera, but I could see the little dot over here. And yeah. So again, works very well here. And a, a cool, another cool thing about the pencil is if I want to take a screenshot, if I swipe from, from this corner, it'll take a sc screenshot of whatever I'm looking at. Okay, now, same type of deal here. So if I want to start drawing something or writing notes or, you know, 5 plus 5 equals 10. And the sensitivity works for this as well. Now the other cool thing is when you go to a website, I'm gonna sh we're going to get into Wi-Fi tests in a bit which is another major difference between the two. So if I go to Google, I could, you know, I can also start writing stuff and say, I want you to search for a Ferrari and click on that. And you could see when I hover over this, it's actually selecting this stuff. So it's, it's kind of cool. F40 is actually a pretty badass Ferrari. So is the F50, old school, but I, I really like them. Now something I'm very excited about is the new iPad Pro supports Wi-Fi 6E, which may be an Apple first. I'm not 100% sure, but definitely an iPad first. The iPhone also doesn't support it. The MacBook Pro 16 inch I got at the end of last year doesn't have it. It still has Wi-Fi 6. The iPad Air is on Wi-Fi 6. So this guy's on Wi-Fi 6E. I'm using the TP-Link Deco XE 200, which is a Wi-Fi 6E mesh system and my computer is running as a server so this is a local speed test and I'm going to run it so let me refresh the page click start and you guys will see the speeds that I get on Wi-Fi 6E so already it's running really fast it's keep in mind this is actually faster than gigabit now on Wi-Fi so that alone is pretty crazy now this is a local speed test so this is not going to the internet. This is really just going to my computer that's acting as a server. But still, it just shows you how capable Wi-Fi 6E really is. Now, when this is done, which it just finished, let me refresh this. Let me click start on this. This is running on Wi-Fi 6. So there's a huge difference in terms of speed. Now, with that said, just to be fair, if I was doing an internet speed test, the difference would be much more minimal because then I would be capped by my internet speeds. And honestly, even this is more than fast enough for whatever I'm doing on the iPad, which is usually watching YouTube or Netflix or just surfing the web for some simple stuff. So even this is more than fast enough for what I need, but I did want to demonstrate the differences between Wi-Fi speeds. Now let's play an audio sample so you guys can hear the difference. So the Pro does sound better, has better bass, just better overall sound. It's not a huge difference, but it does sound better. Now I'm recording on both front-facing cameras on both iPads so you guys can see and hear the differences. So right off the bat, the iPad Air is a phenomenal deal because you're getting the M1 chip and then several months I've had it, everything I've thrown at it, which is not that much because I'm not doing video editing or anything like that on it, it's been fine. So I've been playing games on it, it's been fine watching videos, YouTube, Netflix, Crunchyroll, all that stuff. It's been fine with that. I use the Apple Pencil to take notes and stuff. Been good with that. I've done some shopping with it. Fine with that. So overall, amazing tablet. Now, the only thing I don't like about it is when you're scrolling, it is a tad bit choppy and only because now I'm used to the iPad Pro. I've seen the 120 hertz. So now when I see the 60 hertz, I'm like, hmm. So aside from that, the iPad Air is perfect in my mind. Now, here are some reasons to get the iPad Pro. First of all, you are getting the new M2 chip, which is faster than the M1 chip, but 
in my case, I wouldn't see too much of a difference because again, I'm not doing any video editing or any processor intensive tasks aside from a little bit of gaming, but it's not that much. Number two, you're getting Wi-Fi 6C, which is a bit faster, but in order to take full advantage of Wi-Fi 6C, you do need a Wi-Fi 6C router or mesh system, which I've reviewed a whole bunch of those. Number three, you're getting face unlock versus touch ID. I do prefer face unlock, but honestly, they're both fine. Number four, you get the Apple hover feature, which I'm assuming would be really good if you're an artist or someone that uses the pencil a lot. The main thing for me is the 120 hertz refresh rate. So that to me is the reason why the Pro is worth it, just because it's buttery smooth. And aside from that, you also get a slightly better screen if you get the 12.9 inch and you do get slightly better speakers. Let me know what you guys think in the comment sections below and as always, smash that subscribe button and I'll catch you guys in the next one.